The International Maritime Organization, or IMO, is a technical organization that regulates international shipping. And at COP28, negotiations are happening in regards to the global greenhouse gas emission mechanisms, especially in this sector. And Marshall Islands is at the forefront of this for the Pacific region. Uh, the Marshall Islands is one of the largest uh, registries in the world. And we do take that obligation quite seriously. IMO becomes one of the uh, few spaces where we have a uh, larger than normal voice. And in, in, in having that privilege, we feel that we have to raise the issues of the islands, particularly within the IMO as, uh, as an important sector uh, for all of us. We understand that shipping is our bloodline or our lifeline and uh, everything that comes to our region comes through shipping. Uh, but we also understand that shipping contributes 3% of global emissions. Uh, and as a large registry uh, state, uh, we want to use that voice uh, to ensure that IMO steers and align itself to the commitments that our Pacific leaders had championed in 20, uh, back in uh, Paris, under the Paris Agreement, calling for a 1.5 alignment. So the Marshall Islands, as in, in, in calling for that 1.5 alignment, together with Solomon Islands and other Pacific Island countries, submitted a universal mandatory levy proposal uh, that would um, charge $100 per ton of CO2 emissions uh, back in uh, MEPC 76. Um, and that money would be used to transition the sector to um, uh, align itself to uh, 1.5 uh, degree um, Celsius. Uh, but also we feel that um, a majority, slightly majority of that money should come back to the vulnerable countries, such as those in the Pacific, to continue to build their resilience from the shipping's dirty past. Representing the small islands development states in the Pacific region, the Republic of Marshall Islands Ambassador to South Korea and the Presidential Special Envoy for Maritime Decarbonization, His Excellency Ambassador Albon Ishoda stated with the existential impacts of climate change faced in the region, shipping can continue to play its pivotal role in the global economy including ensuring the flow of essential supplies while also addressing longer-term sustainability goals. There is an opportunity for us to continue to raise the issue uh, in, in these uh, COP meetings. Um, <clears throat> you know, currently there is a comprehensive impact assessment that is going on to review these uh, uh, pricing mechanism or the economic uh, mechanism under the uh, approach that the member states of IMO had um, agreed to um, by saying that, uh, it meaning that uh, IMO, there is a process now that needs to go uh, and understand what will be the disproportionate negative impacts on countries like those of us in the Pacific. How is that going to impact trade or the cost of goods arriving in our shore? Um, from our own internal assessment, we feel that there, there will be some increase in prices, but not that much. Uh, we, I think they will still fall within the range of what we continue to see with fuel fluctuations and the cost of fuel moving up and down. Um, but also, it gives us, uh, uh, the Marshall Islands hopes that this um, uh, revised strategy gives us a clear vision of how the international sec shipping sector uh, will decarbonize by 2050, allowing us the opportunities to also transition our own uh, domestic and regional shipping fleet uh, to those that are more um, greener and uses less um, less uh, fossil fuels. And it's a it's a long process. I have to add. It's not an overnight process, but it's one that uh, the Micronesian Center for Sustainable Transport, uh, which is based in the Marshall Islands and support uh, Pacific countries uh, to identify, um, identify uh, national transport objectives and priorities, 
particularly in the maritime sector, uh, and help uh, connect or help devise strategies to achieve uh, uh, support uh, for these uh, different countries. So it's still a work in progress. We will still continue to lead it, and RMI will continue to commit its role both within the international sector and in our regional regional work uh, and uh, demonstrating it from our domestic examples so that uh, all these technologies and proof of concepts are available uh, for the Pacific countries to, to learn from and to, to adapt when, when they see fit. Representing the Pacific Islands in these negotiations will help identify objectives in the maritime sector to devise strategies for the Pacific member states. Siniva Kasimani reporting for Pacifica TV.